Hello friends, this video on Vector Algebra Part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 9. Let's do some operations of vectors. So if I have two vectors given by this, a vector is a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap and vector b is b1 i cap plus b2 j cap and b3 k cap. If you want to find the sum of these vectors, it is nothing but you add i components a1 plus b1 i cap, you add j components a2 plus b2 j cap and you add the k components a3 plus b2 k cap and that's what you get sum of these vectors. Similarly, if you want to find difference instead of addition in this case, you subtract the i part a1 minus b1, subtract the j part a2 minus b2, subtract the k part a3 minus b3. Vector a and b are equal if and only if the i components are equal that is a1 is equal to b1, the j components are equal that is a2 is equal to b2 and the k components are also equal that is a3 is equal to b2. That is a, j and k all the components are equal correspondingly then only we say the vectors are equal. Similarly, when you say multiply this vector by a scalar, please note, I'm not talking about multiplication of vector with a vector that we'll talk later. Now I'm talking about multiplication of a vector with a scalar, right? So in that case, you multiply the i component with that, multiply the j also, multiply the k also. For example, you multiply some vector with 5, then you multiply the i component with 5, j with 5 and k also with 5. If I have two vectors and k and m be the scalar, then if you see you say k into a vector plus m into a vector, that is nothing but k plus m into a vector. This is all distributive law. Similarly, if you have you say k into m into a vector, or you say k m into a vector, both are same. Or you say a plus b vector, you multiply with k, or you multiply k with a vector, then you multiply b with k vector and add both are same. The all normal distributive law which we have which we can derive using the existing uh, formula which you, which you have learned. So that is you have you multiply the same vector with two different uh, scalars. You can do that way individual multiplication and adding or you add first and then multiply. You multiply one scalar with two vectors addition. You can first add the vector and then add in the multiply the scalar, or you can multiply the scalar individually and then add. And when you talk about the scalar multiplication, you first multiply m, then k, or you take first k m and then multiply a, all are same. Collinear vectors for any value of lambda, lambda is always collinear to vector a. Why? So if I have some vector a, the lambda is something like this. Correct? You just increase the magnitude. The direction is still same. So both these vectors will be parallel. Correct? Because they are same vectors with extra magnitude. So this guy is a, this guy is lambda a. I am assuming lambda is greater than 1, so it is more. Or it can be this smaller also but in all these cases they are all parallel so they will always be collinear. Take any value of lambda, lambda a will always be collinear to a. Two vectors are collinear if and only if the same rule I am flipping it. I am saying lambda a and lambda a are collinear. The flip version of the same form, same theorem is they are collinear if and only if there exists a lambda which is non-zero such that my b is equal to lambda a. So I am saying that b and a are collinear if and only if there is some lambda such that b is equal to lambda a. The same theorem which I had, I just flipped it. Correct? So, if I can just break this by b into component form, I get b1 i plus p2 j plus b3 k and similarly a i break into component form, I get 
a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and if you equate these two equations since lambda you can multiply with these these and these i get this and now since these are equal when i equate these you get b1 is equal to lambda 1 a right similarly b2 is equal to lambda 2 a and b3 is equal to lambda 3 furthermore if you take b1 by a1 that is equal to lambda b2 by a2 lambda b3 by a3 lambda that is equal to lambda so what you can see here is if they are two vectors they are collinear then if you divide these two vectors all i and j and k component it has to be proportional for example if i have let's suppose 3i plus 4j plus 6k this is one vector 6i plus 8j plus 12k is another vector if you see 3 by 6 is equal to 4 by 8 is equal to 6 by 12 all are same i can say that both are collinear correct we'll take some example of collinear vector let's write two vectors which has same direction so let's suppose I have some vector r is equal to a i plus b j plus c k. So any vector which is let's suppose lambda r, any value of r will be collinear to this guy, right? So let's suppose if I take 8 i plus 2 j plus 3 k, I multiply the whole thing with respect to this suppose is r vector. I multiply the same thing with respect to into 2 lambda is equal to 2 let's suppose so the new vector i got is r1 will be 16i plus 4j plus 6k so this guy is parallel to this guy they are all collinear you can multiply with 3 also 8i plus 2j plus 3k that becomes 24 i plus 6 k plus 9 so all these vectors are correct so you take any vector you multiply with some number some lambda some scalar value the new vector you get is a collinear vector let's take some example of vectors we have to find the value of x and y so that these two vectors are equal as I have already told, for two vectors to be equal, the x, x component has to be equal, the i component has to be equal, and the j component also has to be equal. Correct? So, in this case, I can say that 2i equal to xi or x equal to. Similarly, 3j is equal to yj, 3j cap is equal to y j cap or I can say y is equal to 3. So thus I can find the value of x. Very simple. I had two vectors and they are I have been told that they are equal. Now since they are equal the i component and j component has to be same. It was 2 here, it was x here. Both are same so x will be equal to 2. It is 3 here, it is y here so y will be equal to Let's find the sum of the vectors. You have this vector A, B, and C. We have to find the vector sum of these vectors. So I know that if I am finding sum of these, I have to add i component first. This is 1, this is minus 2, this is 1. This becomes 1 plus minus 2 plus 1. And the whole thing is i component here plus now we'll talk about j component minus 2 plus 4 plus minus 6 you okay, guys j component correct the whole thing is j minus 2 plus 4 minus 6 so for k 1 dot here plus 5 minus 7. 
So what you get here is 1 plus 1 minus 2 that is 2 minus 2 0 0 i plus minus 2 plus 4 is 2 2 plus minus 6 is minus 4 minus 4 j cap plus 1 plus 5 6 6 minus 7 is minus 1 k cap so what you get is minus 4 j cap minus k cap and that is my answer so very simple you just add the i components add the this all three add j components all with star add the k components all with star and you get the answer find the unit vector in the direction of this vector so we know that finding a unit vector in the direction is very easy actually. So if a is a vector, unit vector in this direction will be given by a cap and that is nothing but you take the whole vector a and divide this by the magnitude of a. We know the a vector, the only thing we don't know is the magnitude of a. So magnitude of a is nothing but root of x square plus y square plus z square where x here is 1 because 1 i plus y square is also, y is also 1 y square z is 2 2k 2 square that is nothing but root of 6 so my unit vector is nothing but a cap that is nothing but 1 by root 6 of i plus j plus 2k and that is nothing but 1 by root 6 i cap plus 1 by root 6 j cap plus 2 by root 6 and that is my answer. So this guy is a unit vector in this direction. So logically also you see unit vector is nothing but you have this vector a which had some magnitude and I wanted to make it a unit vector. So if I want the magnitude of this that is magnitude of a and I divided this thing with this guy itself. This become a unit vector. So I had this vector. I divided this guy with the magnitude of a. So it is become a vector with length 1 but the direction is still same so this is nothing but a unit vector in the direction correct let's take one more example this question is similar to the last question the only thing is here we had to find the unit vector for this a plus b vector so first you have to find a plus b vector and then you have to find unit vector finding a plus b is pretty easy we have to add the i components z and k components so when you say a plus b i you add 2i minus i 2 minus 1 becomes 1 1 into i plus j minus j plus j becomes 0 plus 0 j plus k 2k plus minus 1k that is 1k 1k that is i plus k this is my a plus b and then unit vector a plus b a light hole cap is nothing but you have this vector you divide this vector with the magnitude of this so to find magnitude first magnitude of a plus b vector is nothing but root of x square plus y square plus z square all right x is 1 1 square y is 0 because there is no 0 j component 0 square plus k is a, again 1 so 1 square this becomes root 2 so here it's pretty simple now a plus b vector is nothing but i vector plus k vector the whole thing divided by a plus b magnitude that is root 2 so this is i by root 2 plus k by and that is my answer that the unit vector in this direction so pretty simple not a difficult question you have some vector you get this vector unit vector is nothing but you divide that vector with the magnitude of that vector you get a vector of the same direction but with magnitude one and that's what i'm looking for thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more Thanks once again.